Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ, and I think you only need five lures to catch smallmouth bass in lakes, rivers, reservoirs, winter, summer, spring, fall, no matter when, you only need five lures. So we're gonna talk about that today. So before we get started guys, please subscribe to the channel below. This video today is a part of the In The Boat series of videos and basically I try to break down bass fishing while in the boat or next to the boat as you can see here today. And I really wanna to try to simplify bass fishing for people. We have so many different lures, we have so many different colors, we have so many different rods and reels and everything in bass fishing. I'm trying to simplify that, make things simple so that you can focus on catching bass and not trying to figure out what they're gonna eat. Yes, you can catch smallmouth on a huge variety of lures. You can catch them on literally almost anything, but these five lures I have selected today seem to dominate when it comes to smallmouth. And not only that, I think that if you're out there and you're trying to find smallmouth on your local lake or river or creek, and you only have, you don't wanna overcomplicate things. Just have these five rods rigged up and you're gonna be able to find smallmouth. I don't care what time of the year, you're gonna be able to catch smallmouth on these five lures. So let's get started. The first lure, and probably the best lure of the bunch, well, in my opinion, it is a topwater lure such as a Spook or Sammy or Zara Spook. This is probably my favorite lure to catch smallmouth on, and smallmouth absolutely love topwaters, and they absolutely crush topwaters. Now, the time that I'm typically going to use this lure is after the after smallmouth have spawned, and most of the time it's gonna be in that summer to fall range. When, when fish are really active and they're feeding heavily, this is a great, great, great lure to locate bass because you can cover a tremendous amount of water with the top water lure like this spook. Now this particular lure that I have here is actually called an Evergreen JT, and it's a JT 115. The thing that I really, really like about this um, this top water and that I, I almost hate to even give it away, but listen to the rattles. You hear that? It's almost nothing. This is basically a silent top water bait. And the reason I love it is I love to fish this on days that are actually kind of slick calm. When the, when the conditions, the, you might have sunny skies and you might have clear conditions, no wind, this lure will draw smallmouth from a long ways away. And because it's so silently coming through the water, man, the, the smallmouth absolutely crush this lure. So the first one, and probably my favorite, is some sort of topwater spook type lure. Again, this is called a J, this is an Evergreen JT 115. It's a fantastic lure. All right, so lure number two, we just covered the top. Now let's cover kind of the middle to even bottom section. And that is a finesse swim bait. Just like the one here, this is actually kind of chartreuse in color. Um, I like a natural, like a green pumpkin, and then like a natural shad color. And then I like something like this, like a chartreuse bright color. You know, smallmouth tend to be attracted to chartreuse and or bubble gum type things often. So I do like to throw this, but those natural colors like green pumpkins and shads and perch type Type colors work really really well but it just seems to be that smallmouth really love these small finesse swim baits this is a this is actually a 3.3 inch Kai Tech probably one of the most infamous uh, swim baits out on the market and this thing just straight catches them that smaller profile almost no matter where you're fishing it like I said in lakes rivers reservoirs like this will absolutely, creeks, this will absolutely blast the smallmouth. And the best thing about this is, is you can fish this really high in the water column, just a couple of feet and burn it, or you can fish it kind of in that middle of the water column, or you can really slow roll that and keep it down on the bottom in 10, 15, 20 foot of water. So that's something that's really awesome about a finesse swim bait and something that again, anytime I go smallmouth fishing, I have one of these things rigged up, ready to go, and I'm gonna use it a lot. It's a great search lure, again, because I can 
I can really fish it just below the surface in the middle. I can fish it on the bottom. Like it works really well and I can cover a lot of water. And that's why this is one of the five smallmouth lures that you need to have when you're fishing. So let's hit number three on the list. And that is a jerk bait, right? And the thing that's so awesome about a jerk bait is that smallmouth are like super attracted to the action of a jerk bait, even more so than largemouth and spotted bass. Like smallmouth, there's something about a jerk bait that smallmouth just absolutely love. And the and the best thing about a jerk bait is you can catch smallmouth on it the entire year. I mean, in, in extremely cold water, you can fish this jerk bait really, really slow, let it pause for a while, and you're gonna get bit. In really hot water or in the summer, you can just jerk that thing constantly, just chew, 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 and, and smallmouth are just deadly attracted to it. I just don't know what it is, I just know that it works. And the best thing about a jerk bait is it has this tremendous drawing uh, factor to it, right? Like smallmouth can see this from a long ways away. And not only that, they'll come from a long ways away to bite it. And that's what's so effective about a jerk bait is, is you could be going down a giant grass fly on a big natural lake and literally just casting every like 20 or 30 feet. And you're covering that entire zone very effectively because this lure has so much drawing power. And the best thing again about it having that drawing pattern is you can actually fish this bait in, in anywhere really from five to probably 15 foot of water. And, and a bass will come up, a smallmouth will actually come up to get this bait. They may be sitting on the bottom in 20 foot of water and you have this jerk bait. You know, you have deeper jerk baits that can dive 12 foot and they'll come eight foot up, they'll come 10 foot up to get that bait. And again, that's why this bait is so effective and probably one of the most powerful tools there is to locating smallmouth is a jerk bait. Now, I like to keep jerk bait colors really, really simple, right? Really, I have one of about three colors that I throw. The first color is gonna be a shad pattern like this. This is kind of like that typical sexy shad color with a bluish back, a little bit of chartreuse. It just looks like a shad, right? That's, that's the first one I'm gonna throw a lot, especially in lakes and reservoirs, you know, in Tennessee and in and, and, and the southeast where there's a lot of shad and, and smallmouth are feeding on shad, that's what I'm gonna throw. In the north, I really like to throw perch, perch colored jerk baits because perch is one of the biggest uh, bait fish that bass eat, smallmouth bass eat in the north. The other color that I really, really like is some sort of translucent color, a color that you can actually pretty much see through. One that some of them you'll have a kind of a purplish back to them and you can see almost through everything else. Love that, those are great baits. And again, I'm trying to keep things simple with this series. So don't go out and buy you a hundred different colors of jerk baits. Go buy you a shad pattern, a perch pattern, and some sort of translucent pattern. And you're gonna have most of your colors uh, right there. That's all you need. So again, number three is a jerk bait. All right, so we have kind of the top and middle portions of the water column covered. Let's talk about the bottom. And this is probably the number one lure that all smallmouth have been caught on, and that is a drop shot. A drop shot is literally, there's probably been more smallmouth caught on a drop shot over the years than any other lure that there's ever been created. And, and for good reasons, this, this particular setup, a drop shot, allows you to fish deeper water especially, but you can catch them in shallow water, but it allows you to fish deeper water. I'm talking 20, 30, 40, 50 foot of water very effectively. You're literally just dropping it right below the boat, fishing vertically. Honestly, I don't even know what we did before a drop shot. I guess people threw things like tubes, and yes, tubes work. A lot of lures work for smallmouth. I know I'm gonna get a lot of people in the comments that are gonna be like, you, I'll catch, I catch them on a crankbait every single day. Yeah, that's probably true. But I'm telling you, these five lures I got here are gonna catch them all year long in any condition. So, so a drop shot. Again, this is probably uh, the lure that is most smallmouth have been caught on. Here's the thing that I love to do with my drop shot. Instead of nose hook, uh, my actual drop shot bait on, I actually like to rig it. Let's see if the camera kind of picks that. I actually like to thread my hook. Dropping my rods here. I like to thread my hook 
up the loop, up on the on the plastic like that. That does a number of things, right? One, that's gonna set this hook back so that when a bass bites it, they're more likely to get the entire hook than if the than if that hook is just hooked in the nose. Number two, it actually keeps that, it helps keep that, that lure perp perpendicular. It actually helps keep the lure, I was gonna say perpendicular to the bottom, but I should just say horizontal. That's a little bit easier to say. It helps keep it horizontal, which looks more natural and more real. Also, one of the big things that it also helps with is line twists. Sometimes when you nose hook a lure and you're reeling it up out of 20 foot of water or 30 foot of water or deeper, that nose hook drop shot bait is just spinning all the way up and it can really twist your line up if you're doing that all day for a long day. So rigging it like this is gonna do a number of good things for you and I highly suggest it. All right, the fifth and final lure that I'm gonna talk about today is something that is really, this is something that a lot of people have started to throw over the last couple of years and for good reason. It catches a lot of bass. Now it catches all kinds of bass, but for whatever reason, big smallmouth, and I'm talking big smallmouth, love this thing. And I don't really know why, and you probably don't really know why, but it is the Ned Rig. I'm about to break my rod. But that is the good old Ned Rig. This thing is a turd. It's literally called a TRD. It's a turd and it is small mouth candy. I don't know why. I don't think a lot of people know why, but it, it mimics a minnow really well. It mimics a crawdad really well. It mimics a goby really, really well. And what, for whatever reason, this do nothing type plastic that just sits there and goes along the bottom is like smallmouth candy. I mean, we just saw Micah Frazier win a tournament. Uh, I think that was last year up on the St. Lawrence River when everyone else was throwing drop shots and jerk baits and Carolina rigs. He won it with this stupid TRD turd, turd worm, you know, but the thing is about it is it, it catches a lot of fish and it catches big ones. And adjusting your, the biggest thing that you wanna do with, with, a, with a net is adjust your head size. Now, I actually pour my own heads when it comes to Ned because I, I don't particularly love um, a lot of the Ned head hooks that are on the market. I have an owner hook in this and every time I hook a fish on a Ned, it is top dead center, perfectly hooked. So I pour my own, I really, really like it. I, there's a number of different sizes you can use, but typically the one that I use the most is an eighth of an ounce or around that 10th ounce range. Um, the heaviest I typically go is like a sixth um, in deeper water. I, I have gone up to a quarter. I don't like the quarter as much because I just feel like it's a lot of weight and a bass can throw it a little bit easier. So typically, and, and the best way to really fish a net is the lighter a head that you can fish, the better you're gonna be. And I'm, I'm telling you, that is the, the much better you're gonna be. So. If you can get away with a really light one, like a 16th, I know some people, the people who really invented that rig fish like a 32nd ounce, like really, really small uh, Ned, Ned rigs. But I like a 10th or an eighth size. That's a really good all around. I catch a lot of fish on it and you will too. So guys, those are, those are the top five. We got a, a spook type lure. We got a finesse swim bait, a jerk bait, a drop shot, and a Ned rig. So you're gonna be set from top to bottom, everywhere in between, all year long. You're gonna be able to catch fish on those five baits. That's all you need in order to catch smallmouth. So don't overcomplicate things. The next time you go try to find smallmouth bass, rig up those five lures. And again, that's all you're gonna need. Now just go to the water, put those five lures to work, and you're gonna catch a lot of smallmouth. Guys, have a good one. I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ. And I think you only need five lures to catch smallmouth. Small, all right, all right. So lure number two, all right, all right. So lure number two, deeper. That 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 uh that nose hook 